I have no illusion that tonight's action will ring down the curtain on Gaddafi's reign of terror. But this mission, violent though it was, can bring closer a safer and more secure world for decent men and women. We will persevere. A president in the Oval Office then, a president nowhere near the Oval Office now. President Obama has been taking a whole lot of criticism for not dropping his South American visit while bombs were going to be dropped on Libya. It could be why voters, when asked if President Obama is a strong and decisive leader, at least in a new Fox News poll, appear to be saying, well, not as much. They're losing confidence. With me now for some historical perspective, presidential historian Jane Hampton Cook. Um, it, it could fly a variety of ways. I could see why the president would continue business and this trip uh, in the middle of all of this. But you think there are no ways to, to back away from the image of a president launching an expanded war and being on an economic trip in South America, right? That's right. I mean, certainly a president can do his job wherever he is, but you, you have mixed visual messages. I mean, you have Obama uh, with children playing soccer in Brazil. At the same time, you're seeing missiles being launched. And so it's an odd visual message. And I think it's very unprecedented. We've never seen a president do this before. You've seen presidents such as Reagan at the White House leaving Camp David to come and address the Philippine Civil War and then the Libyan issue. JFK was hunkered down in the White House in the Oval Office uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And so we've seen both Republican and Democratic predecessors uh, really focus and, and get that visual message coming out of the White House. And that's just what's different about about, about this particular situation. But what, Jane, if there is a method to this, and it might be the president saying, I expect Europe and coalition forces to lead the way in this because Libya and its fate is far more important to them than it certainly is to us. And uh, let them sort it out and let us quit being the ringleader here. I think that may be what's going on because I think he's certainly prioritized the international audience in his communication on this. He's done this over, you know, the American audience. He's really speaking to the world more than he has to American interest. But Americans deserve to have him say why this is in America's best interest. That's something Reagan did very effectively in 1986. He clearly delineated why it was in America's best interest to strike Libya. And he, you know, explained that there had been a bombing that killed Americans in Berlin and that that was, Libya was behind that. And so it's really important for the American president to explain to the American people why it's in America's best interest to do But I this. wonder in this case, Jane, if it's a little less black and white for this president because he's not responding to any late attack per se on American interests as much as uh, a leader who's attacking and killing his people. Offensive uh, by any one stretch of the imagination, but by that litmus test, we might as well take out at least a dozen other leaders while we're at it, right? So, so does that dilute the argument or does it what? I think it dilutes the argument for sure, but I think it just opens uh, the question to for him to come back and say why it's in America's interest because it stabilizes the region to go after Libya at this point in time. He just needs to give more detail. On Friday, he said, you know, here's why this is important to us, and then he continued to talk about the international dimension. So I think he could go a little further. He could tie it to American democratic values, um, but it clearly he is speaking to the international audience. Um, in his communication thus far. Yeah, my crackpot theory, and you're the expert, as you know, I play one on TV, is that's what he's doing. He's trying to internationalize this and to say this is an international issue, not a solely American issue. Don't leave me trapped with this thing. It's, it's everybody. You know? I think that's exactly what he's trying to do. And it remains to be seen if it will work in the long run. All right. So. Jane, good stuff. Thank you very much. Jane Hampton Cook. Thank you. Presidential historian, best-selling author. In the meantime, while bombs are dropped,